that Timothy Benjamin came out from Malone, New York, right away the same year he went back and got his two oldest sons and came back out. He started here with sheep. But he and his wife built the same home that her daughter is living in now. Then Bert's dad took over the ranch. Then by the time Bert, uh, his dad was not well enough to do it, this bird did. That they gradually got into cattle and built the herd. It's not very often, not many jobs, where you can touch the last generation and the next generation daily as you do your work. You know, what you need to do to survive today and still leave you know, the resource so that the next generation has opportunities like you had. And so that's certainly challenging, but also maybe noble. Rules were uh, taken back, put up back on the endangered species list. And so there is a really vivid example of uh, us having to recognize values, that uh, values of others that we have to live with here. Um, in some cases, we may or may not disagree with those values, but they are very real. And you have to be economically uh, solvent as well as ecologically sustainable. And the balance of that is the key. We're working with evolution. We're evolving with it. There's a stretch of the Blackfoot where the fisheries isn't good. And the only tributary of that is Nevada Spring Creek. The only tributary to Nevada Spring Creek is this little Lawson Creek that originates in a mountain down through Forest Service property, then down through some private property. So that's the only the only um, spawning source for that, as it turns out, that big stretch of Blackfoot River. For a number of years, we, you know, because the only value that we saw and our the generation ahead of us saw was irrigation. We all thought, we, we thought, well, we can use all the flood water here to with us because that's not relevant to the fish, but it is relevant very much to the uh, stream function. You know, the flood waters and the, and the sediment that that carries down are what fills in, you know, um, cow footprints or and, and, uh, helps form, uh, it, it, the high water will flush the sediment from the bottom of the stream, which is critical for spawning, and then deposits up on the edge of the bank, uh, and uh, it tends to make streams narrow and deep, which is, you know, without fish need for cool water. So the recognition of that has changed our management some, and uh, so we have a, a, a deal with the downstream landowner that if we let some of the flood water go, we can use some of the grass on his property and as a trade. Now we're recognizing that, 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 that fisheries are a value, but it's very worthwhile, and I think we now have a really good relationship with those other parties that came into the valley with different values that we did, and so that whole process has been real healthy. People on the land share better because they need each other and they learn to live with each other and learn to compromise more because they do need each other. We just have been overwhelmingly blessed in family and community. The people on the land, the, the, the tie to the land also ties into that community and there's a sense of place and you know, I'm going to be a neighbor and this person my whole life so that relationship is important to me. Eric and I get stuck together a lot. We like it. Yeah, <laughs> we, we like the horse part. We end up, they'll tell us, okay, this bunch needs to be moved. Kind of like today. Just uh, getting, getting to be out and getting to grow up with my family um, in a rural area. And I think that it has, it has its, I mean, it's not easy all the time. And I'm just starting to learn that. Um, but I wouldn't want to have grown up any other way. This is my great grandfather. This is to his family in West Virginia. I left the States, because of course Montana wasn't a state then. He left the States on the 22nd of February in 1867 and arrived on the golden soil of Montana on the last of June following. You would probably like to hear something about Montana, the El Dorado of the world. Her agricultural lands are unsurpassed, her mineral lands inexhaustible. I live in the Rocky Mountains, the backbone of the American continent. Here the altitude is high up and healthy. I can look away down towards America where you live, conscious that I am higher up than you are. I mean higher in the mountains where the treasures of North America are locked up. The arable lands are confined to valleys alone and with proper cultivation largely remunerates the farmer for his industry, while the hills or mountain lands are steep, rugged and rocky. 
but produce a luxuriant and nutritious grass, affording splendid pasture to the stock grower. I don't know any better country than Montana.